In this tutorial video, we will look at how to design PCR primers using GeneWarrior. GeneWarrior's interface allows us to interactively select the target positions and the desired parameters and lets the software handle the job of selecting primers. First off, we start by loading our sequence into GeneWarrior. We can directly paste it into the text field and click Add. Our sequence appears as a new entry with the title unnamed. We can change the title by double-clicking it and entering a new name. Alternatively, we can also paste faster formatted data into the text field and add the sequences this way. The faster titles will be used as the entry name. After we entered our template sequence, we select it by clicking on the entry itself. The background changes the color which signalizes that this entry is now selected. Next we click on PCR in the toolbox tab. There's a tool called Primer Design. A new window opens which contains our sequence. At first we have to set the rules on where to design the primers. Let's go through the easiest case first. We have a certain sequence that we define as our target. The target is our region of interest with which we want to amplify. This can be a single nucleotide, for example if we want to validate the mutation, or a longer region we want to clone. So first we select our target using the mouse and by clicking on Set Target. The software will now design primers that are on the left and right side of the target but will not overlap it. For this simple case we are already finished. Let's check the parameters in the next tab. Important is the product size or the length of the resulting PCR product. A big difference between the minimal and maximal length will give the software a wide range to choose possible primers so that it can fulfill the further restrictions, such as the primer sizes, the melting temperature, and the GC content. The salt concentration and DNA concentration parameters are used to calculate the melting temperature. Because the standard parameters are ok for our purposes, we don't change anything here. The next tab allows us to design a hybridization probe for qPCR or real-time PCR. However, in our case we just want to do an amplification PCR, so we leave this option unchecked. That's it already. We click on the button Calculate Primers and let the software do its job. If everything is ok, we get a choice of up to 5 primer pairs to choose from the drop-down menu. The chosen primer pair is visualized in our sequence and the details such as the primer sequence, the melting temperature and GC content are listed below. Use the drop down menu to view all suggested primer pairs. Now let's make it a bit more interesting. Let's assume that for some reason we can't design a primer where currently the right primer sits. As an example, we are maybe not sure about the sequence quality at this position or we know that this position is much too variable to use as a primer site. So we want to exclude this region as a possible primer site. We go back to the first tab, the rules tab. We mark the region we want to exclude and click on set as exclusion. This region is now displayed in red as exclusion region. If necessary, we can create multiple exclusion regions. Let's click on Calculate Primers again and see what happens. The right primer is now moved to another place where it doesn't overlap our exclusion region, just as we wanted. If we go through the drop-down menu again and view all suggested primer pairs, we see that none of the right primers are now placed on the excluded side. Great, now let's assume another case, 
where we want the left primer to start at a certain given position. This could be useful for cloning or if for some reason we need our PCR product to start at a specific location. We go back to the first tab and click on force left primer to position. We enter the position where we want to set our primer. Now a small triangle appears at this position. It represents the start of the left primer. Be aware that this option massively limits the choices of the software to design primers. The only way to still fulfill our melting temperature and GC content restriction is by varying the length of the primer. Let's give it a try and see what happens. We click on Calculate Primers again. If we are lucky, the chosen primer now fulfills all the parameters and starts at our spe specified location. Of course, it's also possible to place both the left and the right primer to a specific location. In this case, we don't need to set a target or any exclusions. If we are happy with our primer choice, we, ex we can export the pair to our project by clicking on export this pair. The PCR information, the primer sequences and the resulting PCR product are now added to your project. If you want to share your project with a colleague, click on Share and Export, then on Share Project. Confirm it and you will get a link which you can email your colleague so that they will be able to see your project, including your primers.